What's up YouTube, it's AD with US Squads. Hope you guys are having a kick-ass day. Well, I hope you guys don't get sick of seeing Irene. Irene's my custom-built Rem 700. And a lot of, she's popping up in a lot of my videos because a lot of the stuff I'm buying uh, actually is for her. So today we're going to be talking about muzzle brakes. And uh, currently I have a Saker um, QD mount muzzle brake on her now. And um, I really... I really thought I learned a few things about suppressors lately um, from personal experience um, I found out that I cannot get this Saker and QD mount and this rifle to shoot really good together consistently um, I think the Saker is more for an AR, AR type platform um, that's just my opinion so on a precision rifle I think I'm going to you know I have the Harvester and the Omega on order and I think those will be better options for the bolt gun. So with that in mind, I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to change this out. So um, I haven't really shot her with this Saker. I'm going to reserve this for my AR type platform rifles, my 300 Blackout and or my um, 223 5.56. So currently I have the Saker QD mount here. And this is the brake. And it's okay. But I've heard great things about... Um, this company called American Precision Arms and they are they're getting pretty popular as far as muzzle brakes go so these guys make this little bastard gen 2 brake that really piqued my interest okay so I wanted to try it out and there's two main reasons why I chose this particular brake over the hundreds of options it seems right there's so many options for different brakes out there and uh, what's the main purpose of having a muzzle brake? Well, it's just to reduce recoil. Bottom line, okay? Once you reduce recoil, you can stay on target. Um, there's less mind games if your rifle is not kicking your ass. Uh, you know, something that's really popular for muzzle brakes is anything in a big bore caliber, magnum cartridge like a 338 Lapua Magnum, 50 cal. You, you, you'll never not see one of those rifles without a muzzle brake. Okay, and actually that's what's funny because uh, American Precision Arms is, pr I think they kind of started making brakes for the big bore, the large 338 Lapua Magnum type cartridges. Okay, so um, with that reputation and their new innovation, I decided to buy one of their brakes. So that's it. So here it is, there's not much in the packaging, it's just this brake here, like so. 6.5 millimeter. Why? Because I'm shooting a 6.5 by 47, basically 0.264 diameter projectile. So this brake would work for pretty much um, 6.5 Creedmoor, 260 Remington, 6.5 by 47 Lapua, and probably 6 millimeter would be fine too. I'm sure. Okay, but just check with them with what works the best. Thread pitch on this is 5 8 by 24, which is a very common thread pitch for your 308s, 6.5, Creedmoors, etc. Okay, but make sure you get the right thread pitch depending on what your gunsmith does with your rifle. Now, why do I not just keep this brake on here? Um, because there's something that I want to do that I don't like currently how this is set up. So, one thing you have to consider with brakes is how to correctly, uh, what I, what people say is called timing, having the brake time correctly. And what that means is most brakes will have um, ports on the right and left side of the brake. See, one side. Actually, if you picture this as a clock, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and... 9 o'clock is where the ports are, right and left side. So that's kind of what we, we talk about, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Um, sometimes some ports will have a couple holes on top, but they won't really have them much on the bottom. Because the problem with the ports facing down toward the bottom is you're going to hit the dirt, and that dirt's going to go up in the air into your eyeballs. Okay, And that annoys you even more than you annoying the people to the right and left of you with the loud blast. So, um, again, back to why this is a pain in the ass. Well, you have to time this brake. So, to time it, uh, you use these wafer-thin little washers. 
and each of these washers have a little bit different density as far as thicknesses I guess I don't know if that's density but they have and this is the combination of, wa of, of washers I needed you see how thin these are to get this to time correctly so when I'm done putting pressure on this the ports are facing 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock right and left side I can't have it tilted I have I shouldn't I shouldn't have it tilted you shouldn't have it canted as far as the ports angling up diagonally and you definitely do not want the ports at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock which is up and down otherwise you're gonna be blowing everything on the ground into your freaking eyeballs it's super annoying okay so um, the cool thing about this little bastard let me just show you the little paperwork on it because that's all that came with it here's a warning that makes sense they tell you to never fire this gun with a brake on without hearing protection why because it amplifies the noise it brings it right back to you it's super loud um, people call it a muzzle brake sometimes we call it an asshole brake pretty funny here's a little schematic of it and thread pitch they want you to be at 5 8 by 24 and the instructions on how to install it I'm going to actually show you guys how to install this on the video trying to keep this video under 10 minutes okay so now I've got the now on I've removed the other brake and I've got the pain in the ass timing washers out of the way right now I don't have anything on the barrel other than nothing threads are clean good to go right so what do we do now all I do let me show you the brake I take the brake oh uh, by the way let's talk about the brake options um jeez First off, the price of this brake is $160, so you're like, holy shit, that's expensive. Dude, this is what I find out. Everything with precision rifle shit is super expensive. So, you know what? I'm used to paying about $75 bucks for a muzzle brake. When it said it was $160 for this precision rifle shit, I was like, whatever. It's okay, whatever. I don't even... I whine for like a second I get over it because everything freaking costs a ton. So you can get this in uh, this parkerized finish, like this military scratch resistant finish. Or if you want it to be pretty like your barrel, you can get it in stainless steel. It's up to you, however you want it. Um, as far as calibers go, wow, I got the list here. They got everything you want in this model. They got 22 cal, 6 millimeter, 25 cal, 6.5 millimeter, 270 cal, 7 millimeter. 30 cal and 338, 30, 30, 338 cal. So you have a lot of different calibers. Just uh, if you don't know what to choose, um, definitely consult one of their people. Okay, don't make a mistake and don't definitely don't order one that's too small or you're going to have major problems on the first shot. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So here we have the brake. We have the ports, three ports on the right and left side. And I'm visually thinking it's going to be pointed to the right and left, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Here's a jam nut. And this is the magic behind why I, I chose this particular brake. So I can unscrew the jam nut all the way off and just give you a representation of what this looks like like this. Okay, But to the installation instructions say take the jam nut and make sure that it's up all the way toward the main body of the muzzle brake until it kind of locks out. Okay, From there, you go to your barrel and we're going to hand tighten the brake on there. Okay, we're going to hand tighten the brake on there and just take our time, no biggie, no rush. Make sure it's aligned correctly that you're not going and grinding up your threads because every gunsmith is going to thread this a little, hopefully it's, such, if hopefully it's centered right, but uh, you just want to make sure that you don't strip your threads or do anything funky. Okay, so I'm going to take this brake and I'm going to go all the way down until I'm locked out. Now... One, one port is pointing kind of up and to the right, and the other one's down and to the left. So that would be not correctly timed, as we discussed earlier. Again, we need it pointed to the right and left side. So at this point, we simply unscrew it till our ports are correctly timed, like so. Then take the jam nut and unscrew it till it hits the barrel. And this creates a tension lock to properly lock this out. And so there we go. Uh, also in the instructions, let me uh, read it. They tell you not to over tighten that. So you want to say holding the brake horizontal. Make sure your adjustable wrench to snug the jam nut to the shoulder. 
uh, do not over tighten. So that means don't Herculean, don't go Hercules on this, guys, because uh, I guess that can be a problem. So I have it. Looks like it's correctly timed. I'm going to take this wrench. <coughs> Excuse me. Still got the flu. And I'm going to just give it a little, little tighten. And I'm going to look at this, make sure it's right and left. It looks good. And that's it. Now here's the billion dollar question. In a few days, I got a, a match. I'm going to a, t a one day match. I'm actually going to go the day earlier to re-zero this rifle with the new brake. It should change my point of impact. So I have a couple questions. So I followed instructions precisely. Will this stay locked down with the jam nut with, and not move around after shooting 150 rounds of ammunition? Because that's what I plan to do. I plan to shoot 75 rounds the day before to get warmed up to work on some of my skill sets that need work and then I'm going to shoot the match which requires about 70 rounds itself so one I want to make sure two two purposes we need one to make sure that we like the break it reduces the recoil it does what it's supposed to do number two that this jam nut does not work itself loose so I'm not in the middle of a match and my freaking muzzle break is flopping around and pointed in the dirt and blown dirt, dirt into my face and such not for 160 bucks I have the expectations that all those things will work perfectly as far as it not it not moving and it reducing the recoil so it's manageable and I can stay on target throughout my shots so those are really exciting things that I'm, I'm gonna have to give you a follow-up video on because I'm not sure anyway that's my video you guys have a good day any questions or if you have experience with this break chime in on the comments um, that's it guys. Have a kick-ass night. We'll talk to you soon and look for the follow-up video that will give us our feedback after the match. YouTube, we're back from the weekend. We shot our PRS match, our Precision Rifle Series match. As you can see, I uh, sent over 100 rounds down range. Actually 130 rounds to be exact. And I uh, had a day of practice and shooting. It was a lot of fun. But we wanted to give you some feedback on this uh, brake we installed. Um, a few things to note. Uh, from the set previous clip, um, I didn't do any other installation tweaks other than the video that you saw. Um, which means you saw that I didn't put a lot of pressure or I didn't torque down this that hard with that wrench. I brought the wrench in my toolkit just in case this loosened up but I'll tell you what um, after all the rounds that I shot um, this thing is perfect it's nice and tight it's not indexed differently it's exactly the way I said it on the previous video so not only did I shoot prone I shot in the match which meant I dragged my rifle to seven stages shooting positional prone off barricades off barrels hitting tree stumps and doing all sorts of weird stuff and this held up really well so after uh, a weekend of a full weekend of shooting um you know i actually dinged a pole pretty good carrying this around and the finish this this uh, anodized finish type of deal uh, park rice finish i mean is really good as far as durability goes I definitely like how it looks the profile now as far as recoil goes it definitely reduced the recoil similar to my previous break but you know I think these guys really put a lot of focus into designing a break designed for precision accuracy and shooters where I think the Saker break is designed to the muzzle break is definitely designed to reduce muzzle but I think it was more designed for QD mount for the suppressor and then the brake came second where I think these guys designed the brake to be a primary function and then the uh, the locking nut to be a secondary function so that's kind of my thoughts on that but proof is in the pudding let me guys, let me show you guys a, a five round group that I shot with this rifle that's pretty awesome actually uh, that is <laughs> uh, it could be a coincidence I could be learning to shoot better but uh, that is a five round group I shot this weekend with the brake and the rifle in its current setup with the manor stock etc so um, yeah I could be getting better at shooting um, but I'm gonna show you guys something um, in no, uh, so it's been about five six months since I went down to rifles only uh, to do some training but uh, previously I had the similar rifle set up with the Saker brake and that McCree, uh, McCree Precision Chassis 
And I'm going to show you guys a group that I shot with my rifle in November, about five, six months ago. So this is the same rifle, guys, except with the chassis. The chassis and the brake has been changed out. So I really like this Manor stock when I kind of felt and beta tested, uh, beta tested it down in Texas. And you know what? Proofs in the pudding. I actually should have kept all three groups. Um, all three groups were very similar to this. Of, of course, I'm showing you the best and tightest group that I shot. Uh, it's, it measures at .4990 under a half an inch. But the other groups were not much more, not much bigger than this um, at all. All three groups looked pretty good. This one, obviously, the cleanest looking group, and that you cannot deny is awesomeness. Okay, now. Um, so that's pretty much it guys um, so I'm, I'm impressed with the build it's a robust little break um, I'm impressed with the locking mechanism uh, recoil reduction was definitely there um, the rifle shoots you could shoot it all day I mean look how many rounds I sent down range okay if, if that was a hard hit in 308 or a 300 wind mag I'd be dead obviously the 300 wind mag is a much bigger cartridge but I'm saying uh, even it just made it a pleasure to shoot the rifle. Um, I could shoot the rifle all day long uh, with no sore shoulders, no nothing. It, it's a, it's a definitely its purpose as a break has been achieved. And then from there, um, you have the the ability to remove this easily and to install it easily. As far as putting a, a direct thread suppressor on there, which you know for an application where I want to go hunting and or not disturb people when I'm at a distant campground, be a little bit more stealthy. I can rip that uh, that break off really easily and um, and put on my suppressor, which is a great which is a great add on bonus. So all in all I think it's a good value. The only downside that I possibly see is the end cost of the brake it's 160 bucks it's a premium price for a inch and a half piece of metal but you know what in this precision rifle stuff nothing is cheap nothing Krieger barrel Atlas bipod manor stock spur mount night force scope come on everything is it costs a shit ton of money in this precision rifle game so um, you know the good stuff tends to cost uh, to cost the most so you know sure enough if all you guys got to do is let me find the expensive stuff and I'll find it I'll dig it out and and uh, so far um, a lot of the products that we're we're buying or we're pretty happy with so stay tuned I got some more videos coming on some bipod reviews um, we got the uh, new evolution carbon fiber bipod in the background there um, I've used it for a few times so I'm gonna have a review on that particular product and then uh, that's it, guys. Any questions or comments, let me know. I appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate your guys' support. And uh, we have a few more videos to upload. So, guys, stay tuned. We'll be back. And any comments you have on this particular break, throw down. Throw some comments down. Let me know what you think. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. Have a nice day.